What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through another golf slate, um, the Wyndham Championships this week. It's all. I'm still trying to get back to my energy for golf. I know it should be like I should be higher, like more excited because there's more ability to pick out weird guys, and you know, there's there's nobody at the top that's quite the same. It's just I don't know, man. Since the live stuff, I haven't been as into it, so I'm going to get excited about this one and try and uh, try and really focus and. Do you have any overall thoughts on the course or anything that, I mean, you mentioned the Webb Simpson son, you know, well, like, from what, from what, again, from what I've, what I've, what I've gathered, it's uh it's a course that, that there are plenty of ways to skin a cat. You don't necessarily have to be long, but then again, um, um, you know, being long also never, never hurts, but it's not like one of those, one of those trick courses where you have to be short either. Um, what I have heard is that it's kind of a uh, course of angles that if you can be accurate off the tee, then you have a better shot into the greens, um, particularly on this course. Mm -hmm. So um, with that said, I didn't do a lot of, of, of I mean, I could do this when I, when I run my stuff, but I didn't do a lot of uh, real like heavy course fit adjustments. And a couple of the places where I can adjust my pre projections, I, you can do that sometimes, but I didn't do it this time. I just kind of just ran it for just like a, a neutral course. Um, that's just kind of why I did it. Now, again, Webb Simpson is, you know, you're going to hear some errors. I think his son is named Wyndham or something because of his uh, successes here. And, and it's a, it's a weird situation because he has like a hundred straight, like top tens here or whatever, but he hasn't, he hasn't had a good round in like, like months. Right. You know? Um. So you have, you have uh, those competing interests and um. yeah, it's another, it's another um, non-major slate. Um, but I think it's, uh, which tests your, you know, your ability to separate, you know, nine K guys, in this tournament, as opposed to nine K guys in other tournaments, and uh, I, I actually last week I did I, I actually had forty percent of my lineups go six for six, and I had a couple like like surrounding wow, the, top, the top thirty into into Sunday, and then they just kind of fell fell apart a little bit. But there was a it was kind of a fun little fun little sweat. I'm kind of I'm kind of psyched to get back after it this week and probably go with my with my same approach which we'll which we'll talk about uh mm -hmm. forthwith i guess mm -hmm. absolutely um all right let's get into it. let's pull up your screen and let's play the let's go by tiers and that's what we will we always do and it's how i get my my thoughts straight um let's see here we go all right so starting off who do you like at the top end and do you think you need to play anybody up here yeah so um <laughs> The, the the answer is 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 not much and the answer is no um I, I don't really have much of an affinity for the for the 10k and up range this week I just think that other range is just much more juicy and the difference between you know between them is is small is small so I am probably not going to be playing too much in this top range but if I had to rank them I would say that uh that I have Shane Lowry as my favorite of the bunch followed by M and then Horschel and, 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 and Zalatoris under that. Um, and I'm not going to get to Webb Simpson at all. I, I'm, I'm, I'm less, I'm less interested in how he did in 2011, this course, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> more interested in, in current form and, um, and he's just not, he's not showing it for me at 10, seven, you know? So, so I would, um, I'm going to, I'm probably going to pass on him, but, uh, and pretty much, uh, Pretty, I'm going to be well, well under. I shouldn't say well under, so I don't know, don't know exactly how the ownership's coming in. But I'm seeing ownership on all this stuff, you know, and I'm I'm probably going to be under on all of it. Do you think they're? I I see. I I don't know about Webb getting ownership here that much. That's the only reason why I'm kind of intrigued. Okay. Um, I I mean I have it Zalatoris, Lowry, M Webb. Um, but I I mean I could easily flip those around, and I agree that you do not necessarily need to play any players in this range, and you can still feel very good about your lineups. I don't think one of the winner has to come from the 10k bracket. Yep. All right, uh 9k guys, uh smaller, smaller pool of guys, and uh you know, you you're gonna get a little bit of a, a little ownership discount. I I think that the ownership's a little lower on some of these guys than I thought. And uh for me, I'll just start off that I think that if if Terrell Hatton is really sub 10%, I'll be very into that. And I'll be into Adam Scott around 10%. I also like Corey Connors, but he'll be really chalky. I know Henley is a good play, but he's going to be chalky. Um, but I'm, I'm finding myself mostly with Hatton and Scott in this range. Yeah. Herein lies the, the, 
the 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 not the issue, but um, yeah, Connors is looking like a strong play, but but he's like you said, he's going to be pretty chalky as as well. Russell Henley, I think that I'd be inclined to favor Harold Varner over them all, um, given hmm. uh, given everything, given ownership and all that stuff. Um, so he's my favorite of the nine Ks, given given everything else. But I do I do have Connors rated pretty high, and I have. Um, Russell Henley rated pretty high. Um, it's funny because I'm not quite getting to Hatton, but like you said, I mean, you give him less, give give me him at less than ten percent. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of hard for me to to say no. Um, so yeah, uh, I I like uh, I like uh, I like Varner's my favorite, then then Connors, um, and then uh, then Hatton. Gotcha. Yep. Um, totally understand it. All right, let's get into the eight K guys. We've got. Uh, a slew of guys to talk about, but uh, Sheets, why don't you talk about your favorites? Because I'm, yep. I'm sort of struggling with this range. So my favorite overall play on the slate um, is is Aaron Wise. Um, okay. 8,100. Uh, he's probably going to be popular as he always is. He's and getting he, subjected for lower ownership than I've seen him for a while. Yeah, I can't imagine this. I'm, I'm, just, I'm seeing with 12.5% ownership. I just, how, how do I put this another way? Like every time that he's a good play, like he's really owned. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, so whenever he shows up as a good value, he's like, it's, people like almost overplay him. So, so, so that's the thing I have to worry about with him is he's showing up for me as a good play. And whenever he does, I can, I want to say double the ownership, but, but I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, approaches 20%. Mm-hmm. Um, only because I have him at 13 and I just know what, what ends up happening. Um, so, so I, I do have him as my best overall value on the slate. So, so he's going to be in my, he's going to be my big, he's going to be in my big lineup, which I haven't, I haven't really done, done much of in the last like couple of, couple of weeks. I haven't really put in a big, a big buy-in. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I like a couple of guys uh, that, that make it work this week. So I'm going to do one. And, and Aaron Wise is going to be one of the guys in it. Um, the other guys I like in the 8K range are Brian Harmon. And he's, a, but he, again, he's, he's, he's maybe pushing 20%, which I can't quite get. Um, and then the guy who's just freaking, he's freaking, I guess he's the, he's, he's the goat is the, 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 the Tom Kim, <laughs> like, like 8,600, but he's another one who's, uh, who's going to get a lot of ownership. I don't know what to do. Siwoo Kim. I have him at 20%. Mm-hmm. I would go back. You know what I would do instead of all that stuff? I would go back to the guy I had last week who really just kind of, I don't want to say choked or whatever it is. He got kind of just outplayed was, was Taylor Pendrith. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just killing it all week. And then, you know, just Sunday came. He just kind of just gave it, just gave it up. So if he is, you know, really only 10, 12%, I, I would, I would ride him a little bit. And the, who other, I have two others. Uh, Davis Riley, I think is fine. Poston, I think is fine. But so funny. All these guys are getting somewhat owned. Um, mm-hmm. So I would just, I guess, go back to like Aaron Wise as being my, my best overall play for you. Yeah, I get it. Um, I I like this range quite a bit. My priority plays like start in this range basically, and I'm going to figure out what to do with the other the up, upper tiers. Um, for me, I I am going to, Harmon, Poston, Riley, and Wise are my favorites from this range. Uh, JT Poston has been kind of like on an unbelievable tear. Like, I mean, he's his his last tournaments are he did he did miss the what the one cut, but a T eleventh cut one two cut if he so if he's if he makes the cut you could feel pretty good about a, a nice run here cut 37 nine t- uh, tied for third oh, sorry cut tied for third he, he's actually making quite a few runs and when he when he's making that cut he's really really going after it and and i, I don't know i just, i feel i feel like at, at you know a little lower ownership well not lower ownership but um if, if if we maybe combine like three or four guys and i think i might do that my first build that i'm looking at right now is you know, Wise, Riley, Harmon, Poston, all in the same lineup. Um, I also think Justin Rose is interesting. It feels really bad, but at the same time, he's 8K, finished 10th year last year, even in the middle of, of not playing well, even at that point. Um, good history. He has a, he basically checks all the boxes from what I hear on everything that you would want for this course. And I feel like he's not much different of a play than Webb Simpson, who's 8, 10, 7. So, uh, I have interest in all these guys and, and this is probably where I'm going to be, you know, have most exposure is in that 8k range on this tournament. Can yeah. we do 7,500 to, to, to 8k? Cause it's hard to see everybody at once. And I want to talk through some names. 
Sure. All right. Why don't you? Well, I'll, here I guess I'll start with the uh, with the guys. Uh, I'm. It's not the 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 course fit or everything, but I, I said when they broke up and took a lot of these other top players out. And not to mention that he's actually been just much better in general. I do like Cam Champ, and I think you're going to get him at low ownership. I think Brendan Todd could actually have a good tournament here. Um, Smalley and Svensson, I like both of them. And I am interested a little bit in going to the very low-owned Jason Day. Those are my main guys here, and they're, they're mostly it's an ownership-based thing. All those guys should be sub-10% that I mentioned. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I got I have, I, have, I have I have bad news for you. So so what? I'm going to tell you who my favorite play is, and you're going to be forced to play him. Okay. Um, um, but you, but it's good news because 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 you like this guy. But first of all, what what what's interesting is that I think about this a lot. How many people you think are going to recommend both Cam Champ like and Brendan Todd? You know what I mean? Right. Like like because those are two completely different profiles and. I think about that a lot. Like, like, like if you take like ownership projections and things like that, like let's just say that, that they were both projected at 10%, which they're not, but let's just say they're both 10%. I, th- I don't think that that many people that are thinking through it are going to play them both in the same lineup. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel, I feel that the, the, the project that they're the combination of those two is going to be less than the, than the product of those two because of the different styles. And I think that's kind of a cool way to play. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I, I think I find that interesting. So my overall play, uh, my best, my favorite overall play on the entire slate, uh, given ownership, given everything, given leverage and all this stuff, is a guy that used to play a lot or we used to play. And I don't know why he hasn't shown up, but he just all of a sudden is showing up for me, my second best value overall out of nowhere. So I am back in the Sebastian Munoz business. Yeah, so, yeah. I remember so, that. So, so that's my first, that's my best overall play. And since you played him just as much as I have, you're going to be forced to play him. So I'm, so I'm happy to play him. I was yeah. I was just trying to focus on the the, the lower owned guys. I, I do like he and Streelman as well. I think the eight Ks and the the high seven Ks are probably where I'm going to be at this week. Uh, my next best in, in the range is is actually Keith Mitchell, and one other that you didn't uh, that only because you didn't mention him uh, is uh, is Adam Long. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, I am playing the four guys I just mentioned in the last two groups. Aaron Wise from the 8K range, and then Munoz, Long, and Mitchell. I have outrights on all four of them at about 50 to 1 each. So, Ooh, okay. So that, those are my only outrights. So those four plays. So Wise, Mitchell, uh, Long, and uh, and Munoz. And we'll see what happens. I like it. All right. Um, let's look at the lower 7K range here. Um I am going to, I can, I can just tell you, there's one thing I know I'm going to do. And uh, that is be overweight on Kalem Terran. Uh, this guy is on a run and I want to keep it. I want to keep betting on him. So uh, he is a priority for me at 7,300. Don't think his ownership will be anything crazy. Um, but other than that, there's a bunch of guys who I feel sort of meh about here. Um I understand CT Pan arguments. I could understand KH Lee. I just don't want to dilute my 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 players too much, and just I, I don't have a ton of love other than we get down to Smotherman and uh, Smotherman and excuse me, uh, Stephen Yeager um, coming off of his first. I've been I've been literally I play Stephen Yeager every week and get a missed cut every week, and then last week he has a big tournament, and I of course not there for it. Um, he was on the winning million dollar or whatever the big lineup was. Um, but so Smotherman, Jaeger, and Tarum are my guys down here. I'll give you uh, my two favorites. So be K. H. Lee and Martin Lair. Those would be my two. Uh, okay, my two favorites, and they're both they both look to be very low owned at this point. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are we doing, if anything, under six K sheets? I'm going to let you go first because you usually don't have a whole lot you like down here. No, I usually have the same guy as always. Let me just see if I even get to him. Um, it's it's literally the same guy each time. Uh, well, look how much I have to scroll to even find anybody. No, it's not the same guy as normal. You go down to my fifty third best play on the board is 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 Anirban Lahiri. Okay, I like that actually. That would be and that and that way I do have. Oh, you know what? I do have two others that are in there. Uh, Lucas Glover and Hayden Buckley. So those would be the three guys that would crack the the list for me. 
All right. I also had Hayden Buckley. Ooh, I had Buckley okay. and Sabatini as my two guys um, okay. that I that I was into. And and then I think that it, it might be uh it might be time to go back to John Huh. Ooh. <laughs> Um, he's actually been playing better in this, you know, with the field weaker than it has been. The other guy who I've heard a little bit about is, uh, Justin lower. And I don't really know much about him. Uh, but I, I, I've heard that, uh, I've heard for some reason that he's a really good play this week. I don't have a whole lot of details on that, but I've just heard it. And it's a name that I, I don't know well. So I am going to to take a look at that because I do think Justin lower is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in these low, low on six K guys that sort of can come out of nowhere. There's one other guy who I'm just going to throw a name out. Um, and again, it's only if you're playing a million lineups, but Bo Hogg at 6,400. Uh, who's actually a golfer. So that's the only reason yeah. he's on there. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk, let's talk through it. Sheets. Let's go through, let's go through who's, who's winning the tournament for you. Well, if I'm going to really say who's going to win the tournament, I'm going to have to go with Shane Lowry. Okay. And and I, I in general, I'm not going to be in the 10K range as much, but if you had to bet, tell me I had right. one bet to win exactly. the tournament, I would say Zalatoris. So, okay. and, and again, if it wasn't him, I would have probably said Shane Lowry. So totally get those. All right. In the, in the next tier down or any nine, tier down, 9K to get top five, 9K to top five. Again, I like the 8K guys mostly better. Um, I am going to say Corey Connors. And then I will go with with Harold Varner. Okay. Um, 8K, 8,900 and below to get top 10. 8,900 and below to get top 10. I know who you're going to say, so I'll let you have him. And I am going to say JT Poston. Yep, I will go, in fact, with Aaron Wise. Yep. I don't mind that. Look out for Davis Riley. He's a sneaky one. I would think. I like him. that a lot, actually. Um, so then we've got the seven K range. Who are you going with? I, oh. I, I will. I will throw a shout out here. I am going to play some Kazire. By the way, I didn't mention him, but I am okay. going to Kazire. I got to stay on brand a little. Just, bit. just to review. So my favorite play on the board. So it's going to be Sebastian Munoz for a top twenty. I love it. All right, Munoz definitely going to be a priority for me as well. I think um, now that you mentioned him. A lot of guys I like uh, down here a, a little bit. Um, I think Adam Long is actually the the guy who I might go with. I, I, at Long, Champ, and Day are the ones I'm deciding between. So those three will be mixed into my lineups. But uh, I do like it. I think I think Adam Long is reasonable, the most reasonable. And and under seven K to make the cut. Uh, I'll throw in. Um, I'll give I'll give you a, I'll give you one more. Um, actually I am, I'm going to stick with the guy I said, because I actually have a full 10% of him. And that's, uh, that is the, the honor bond Lahiri. So I'll, I'll give you that one. All Boy, right. I, I don't want to say Glover. No, you know what? It's going to be Lahiri. Lahiri. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Hayden Buckley. Now over 9k to miss the cut. Okay. Um, this is like, I've been really good with these, by the way. Yeah. I know it's true. Actually, you've been really, really good at them. Um, boy, uh, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to come after your guy here, but uh, it's weird because I actually kind of like both these the guys I'm going to name. Um, it's somewhere between Adam Scott and and uh, Harold Varner, I think, for me. Um, ah, I, I. I'm gonna say Harold. I'm gonna say Harold Varner. Sorry, Sheets. I, I still will play some of them, but uh, that's. And I will. And I will go with with Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel. Oh, um, he's a he's a cut maker. This guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. So those are the guys who we have out. And to reiterate, uh, the guys who I'm gonna be highest on this week. Just again at the top, if I play anybody, it'll be Zalatoris Lowry, then Corey Connors, Aaron Wise, Davis Riley, J.T. Poston, uh, Brendan Todd, Jason Day. Cam Champ, Adam Long, Munoz. Actually, and if you wouldn't mind, I, I, I am gonna, I am gonna change my, uh, my, yeah. my, my nine K to miss the cut. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You're gonna say Webb. I am gonna say Webb. Yeah, I, am I had a feeling Webb. that was gonna happen. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys to choose from, but I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a nice list now of like 14 guys that'll probably make up 90 percent of who I played is this week, and that's, that's the way it's gonna be. 
All right, guys. Well, hopefully it's a good week for us. Uh, we'll be in Discord. Um, we'll, I don't know about the sheet showdown stuff. It usually depends on how things are going in the tournament. Um, but hopefully we can make some big money this week and uh, have some screenshots in the Discord. So good luck. Yeah, I um, I but, put uh, my 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 core up in the uh, in the Saberson piece. And again, I, I try to name it so that you know that you that you, you know what it is. I just called it leverage sheets. You know what I mean? So it's, so it reads leverage sheets, sheets leverage core or something. Mm -hmm. So again, these are not necessarily the guys that are the most likely to get there. These are just the guys that I'm going to be most heavily leveraged on the field, and it's going to be like I said, Munoz, um, Long, uh, forget who else I said. Well, those four guys, Mitchell, and and these are just guys I'm going to have just much more of than the field. So that's 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 where I'm at with my cores. Gotcha. All right. Well, good luck to everybody this week and uh, let's take something down. Good luck.